Good afternoon, race fans. I'm Dobbs Davis with Seahorse Magazine, here to give you our first update and analysis of 24 hours of racing here at the Aegean 600. We're in the second edition of this fantastic event here in Greece, and uh, what you're opening up to here is the uh, track review of our race course. And for the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through uh, what we've had going on so far in the race. Uh, this year has been nothing less than fantastic. We've got a, a good solid Meltemi that have been pushing the boats uh, up and down the race course. Uh, I'm scrolling back in time. Uh, and again, the, the access to this tool is uh, through the Aegean 600 website. If you go to find race tracking and uh, go to click on YB tracking, uh, you'll get this view, and, and uh, I'm just going to step through the tools that you would use to, to watch this race and, and give you a few tips. Uh, for example, uh, over on these menu bars on the left uh, are the list of the teams that are in the race, uh, and they're alphabet alphabetically listed here. We've got a wide variety of entries from monohulls through to multi-hulls this year and uh, and you know, with a few exceptions uh, all are out on the race course uh, we've got one boat that retired uh, early on in fact uh, they tired soon after the start with some uh, technical difficulties on board uh, and then uh, as we'll see here in a moment another boat has just recently retired uh, we don't know why they did uh, but uh, presumably everybody is safe anyway uh, so the other thing that might be interesting is the leaderboard uh, to see who's in the lead in each class what you do is select from the menu here on the left uh, which class you're interested in or just in uh, elapsed time around the race course what's called line honors. Uh, they're using IRC, ORC, MOCRA which is a multi-hull uh, multi scoring method, uh, the maxi class, uh, a double-handed scoring in IRC and double-handed in ORC. Uh, you can uh, look at the VMG from the start or just recently but I'm going to keep it at the start uh, from the start because that's going to be a little more interesting story to tell. Um, so soon after the start of the race on the timeline, if we look back at this, uh, the race started at 1400 local time. Uh, or sorry, I should say 1400 for the multi hulls and about 10 minutes later uh, for the mono hulls. Up here at, uh, at uh, Sunyo is the uh, location of the start of the race. It was a fantastic uh, venue there because the um, uh, Temple of Poseidon is up on the up on the cliffs here so it's an entirely appropriate place to start an ocean race. Uh, the breeze was perfect too, 15 to 20 knots, beautiful day. Uh, boats started upwind and went around a, a, a tetrahedral mark set off the, the cliffs of the point here and then proceeded to go around this racetrack. Now this racetrack is uh, a anti-clockwise uh, circuit through the Aegean Islands and there's 13 islands in total uh, that, that they need to pass and pass in a specific way. Um, the first target off the start is to be to the uh, to leave this small islet here that I'm circling with the cursor uh, to starboard and then this island Milos to port. Uh, and then they proceed over to Santorini and go through the caldera of this island, which is spectacular. Uh, and then proceed south to this island, past Carpathos, Rhodos, and so forth. Now, uh, so this is what it looked like, sorry, at the start, if we go forward uh, right around here. And then look, look to see um, just a few hours later how far they had progressed. And, and why is that? Well, everybody was going really fast. Uh, here's the, uh, the largest and fastest boat on the race course is uh, Allegra. It's a 78-foot Nigel Aaron's design multi-hull, uh, sorry, catamaran, and uh, they're quite fast. So uh, down this track, downwind, 15 to 20 knots of wind, they're going 16 knots and uh, re really uh, speeding down the track. So we'll see them lead the charge as we progress. Now, a little bit of information on this tracker. Um, is that it updates every 30 minutes. Uh, so you'll see some jumps and you'll see some tracks that look like these guys may have cut corners. And, and that's actually not the case, of course. They're not going over land, uh, but they are uh, a reflection of the speed that they're going. 
and the fact that, that the, uh, the, the position reporting is every 30 minutes. So if you're going 60 knot, 16 knots in 30 minutes, you're going eight miles. And that's uh, quite, a, quite a leg jump um, from point to point um, around a detailed track like this. In any case, uh, let's keep scrolling forward. And you can see here the boats drop spinnakers on this downwind leg and this turns into a, uh, a reaching leg. The wind all the time is coming out of the north. This is a standard Meltemi direction for this time of year in this part of the Aegean. Um, and the speeds uh, go up. Allegra, for example, you know, gained a knot or two uh, in a high speed reach um, and uh, cer certainly are, are going fast. Then if you watch what happens when they get to Santorini, you know, this is where what looks like there's corner cutting, and it, and it really isn't. Um, it's just, uh, in fact, if we zoom in, we can show this a little bit more, but, you know, it shows Allegra doing this, and of course they didn't do that. They went through here. They went around this little island that's in the, in the middle of this caldera and went around like this. Um, but so don't take these tracks literally. They are just a reflection of the 30 minute gap in, in reporting times. Um, I'm going to zoom back out to get us back to normal as I speed everybody along. Uh, so this time was last night. So let's see, just about uh, midnight. You can see, I mean, this is extraordinary that this race last year was quite slow uh, at the start and in this phase of the race. Uh, so boats weren't getting to Santorini until the next morning and those were only the fastest boats. It was all quite slow and here at midnight we've already got boats passed through Santorini and on to the next leg and, and so this, this portends for us a, it's, it's going to be a quite a fast race uh, this year. Uh, let's see, so uh, I'm sorry this is at 7.30 so they went through, yeah so about midnight there then we get into the morning hours. Um, so three o'clock in the morning, Allegra still out here. Now Akron uh, is a big trimaran. Um, they, in theory, they probably could sail as fast as Allegra, but I, the team on board is uh, uh, has a lot of folks that are. It's an Orma sixty, which is really fast. But I don't think they're they're willing to push the limits that much. Uh, they they started the race. And may have even may have even sailed through this uh, leg of the race with a uh, a reef main, not a full main. Uh, so they uh, uh, it it could be that they're throttled back a little bit just for safety reasons. Whereas Allegra is still continuing. You can see by their angles and their speed, they're really going fast. Uh, the other thing to note here at this stage of the race is hot on their heels in the monohull division are a uh, an Elliott 52 called Rafale. Uh, what's interesting is that they are ahead, boat for boat, of Leaps and Bounds, which is a kind of a, a really fast cruiser racer, 62 feet. Um, this boat uh, is uh, uh, very well sailed. It's a different kind of boat. It's not a full race boat. But, you know, you can see going 13.9 knots, they're not slow. Um, Raphael in this, in this particular SCED report is going a knot slower, but they're still ahead of uh, Leaps and Bounds at this stage. So let's keep going forward. I mean, look at this jump that the lead boat makes, uh, the guys on Allegra. So they're getting down to this turning mark at five o'clock this morning. So at dawn, they're already down in here. The bulk of the fleet is, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they, they're going twice as fast. <laughs> the bulk of the fleet is up in here, uh, headed, still headed towards Santorini. Um, uh, we're waiting to get some images from the photographers, but I, I think there'll be some really spectacular uh, photos from inside of Santorini in that caldera with the sun coming up in the background and the, and the, uh, the village up on the top of the cliffs. I mean, this, this must just be stunning. Um, and yeah, so uh, another big monohull, uh, Hagar 5. This is a, uh, what's called a Scuderia 65. It too is a, is a fast cruiser racer boat. Um, this team was here last year actually, so this is a, a repeat entry. Uh, and they're lagging behind these guys a little bit. Uh, I think in the, in the windy conditions like this, uh, they, they could very well pass them if it gets windier or if it gets more toward upwind, uh, maybe on the other side of the course, but for now they're having to play catch up to these two monohull leaders. 
All right, so that's at uh, 5.07 this morning, just about dawn. Now, the fleet progresses through, and you look to see what happened here. Akron uh, was parked for some reason. We don't know why. Maybe something broke. Maybe they were fixing something. Uh, maybe they were unreefing their main. It's really hard to say. We'll find out find out afterwards. But um, but they're, they're parked in here in the lee of Carpathos doing something. Meanwhile, Rafael is caught up. Allegra's legged out. They're, they're hitting uh, Rodos. Um, and if you carry on now, this is a point where I want to um, bring your attention to the wind. Um, so we could ignore that, turn that off. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, this is the, the Windy app. It's quite, quite good, not only for, uh, for accuracy in, uh, in weather forecasting, but these clever graphics uh, show the wind vectors um, both in direction, linear direction in the vectors, but also wind shading to indicate uh, the, uh, the scalar, for those that remember your math, the vectors and scalars, the, 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 uh, um, the strength of the wind. So they've done that cleverly with, the, uh, with this wind, uh, sorry, with the color coding and color shading. Uh, the scale for that is down here, oops, is down here uh, on the bottom of your screen, um, where the blue indicates you know, up to about 10 knots of wind. Uh, shades of green indicate 10 to 20 knots of wind. And then as you get into uh, the orange colors, this wind is uh, depicted to be 25 uh, and up to towards 30 knots. So, you know, much stronger breeze here in the middle of the course uh, at this time period. Uh, and um, where the boats are going to feel this most of, uh, feel this effect is between Carpathos and Rhodos, but, but here I want to draw your attention to this. This is the big um, uh, wind shade, uh, the, the lee of, the, the lee of, Carpa of uh, Rhodes Island. The, the, this, is, this island has uh, topography, I'm not exactly sure, I want to say 700 to 800 meters. It's, it's, they're not very tall mountains, but it's tall enough to create this shadow uh, of the Meltemi. Now, if you look at this in a little detail, um, you can see that, that actually you don't want to go too wide to get away from this because it actually gets worse out here, if you believe the model. Uh, and a pathway to uh, minimize the impact from the lee of the, the island is to sort of punch through on the closest course. Um, we'll see how that gets borne out in the trackers, uh, but I wanted to bring everybody's attention to that feature. As they get around Rhodos, of course, they'll have to go back upwind, tack, uh, then a long reach over to, the, to uh, get connected to the other parts of, uh, uh, of the racetrack. Uh, so let's go back to here. Uh, we will scroll forward a bit. And then maybe what we'll also do is uh, zoom in and get a little bit more detail on who's doing what and their strategies to get through the lee of these islands. Um, we saw this a bit last year, again, you know, the Hagar, for example, they, all, they elected to go in close. Uh, this says they're going 5.9 knots when leaps and bounds uh, went through there. They were going light, they were going pretty slow too, 5.6 knots. They elected a track that's a little further out maybe thinking that, you know, being out there would, would uh, minimize the lee, but at 3.6 knots and <laughs> with that direction that I can see on the, uh, on the boat icon, you know, they, they, hit, they hit a hole out there. Um, who knows? I mean, these are real-time trackers, by the way, so it's uh, uh, those that are behind could, if they had the internet bandwidth, could very well uh, be tracking what's happening ahead of them and develop some uh, strategies accordingly. There's, there's no delay on these trackers. A lot of times uh, boats that use the YB system will, will put in, the race committees will put in intentional delays so that uh, it's not used as a tactical, tactical tool. Nonetheless, uh, I think this is pretty effective. Even the Rafael guys, if you look at them, um, they had a little hiccup right there in their pass of Carpathos, 0 0.7 knots, so that's Certainly a hole. They certainly had some drifting. Uh, they elected to try to go wide, and uh, you know we'll see who who came out of this the best. Um, so wide track with Rafael, 
sort of a wide track uh, with leaps and bounds, and then a very much inner track uh, with uh, Hagar. So maybe those guys will have a net gain in having taken that approach. Uh, we'd have to look at that in a little more detail. And in fact, I would venture to say that they did because they've closed the gap here with these guys. They're a larger boat and on a beam reach like that or a close reach, they should be faster um, than the, the Vismara Mills 62. But, you know, they're so close in rated speed. Uh, anyway, I, I would venture to say these guys made a good move at Carpathos. Rafael went way out, way out. And see what's happened here. They're again at 0 0.7 knots. They went squarely into that hole. Uh, will that hurt them? You know, see how they stop there. But if you continue forward into real time now, now we can see that the Hagar, you know, has caught up uh, to leaps and bounds. Um, you know, they still got a lot of racing to go, obviously. But but that was a good move, I think, for them. Um, Rafael has started to pick up speed now, 8.5 knots. They will be less prone to any, um, uh, you know, irregular or unstable breeze that'll be close to the island. So arguably maybe being out here is better because they have a more consistent wind, but they will also, with the wind direction coming out of this northwest, they'll also be at a, uh, a tighter angle and therefore maybe maybe a little bit slower because of that. It, it, at one point, eventually, they've got to get to where Allegra is up here. Now, they've slowed down considerably because they're trying to go upwind, and with a catamaran, that's not always great. Uh, and they've slowed down to 9.4 knots as they try to get around um, up here at the uh, tip end of roads. So that's uh, our current picture of what's going on today. Um, I urge everyone listening to uh, tune into the social medias. Uh, we are also making regular uh, updates every day with stories and photos and even videos. Uh, this is uh, uh, quite, a, um, quite a race this year. I mean, I can't say enough about how, how cool it is. The, 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 um, uh, the track is, is, of course, outstanding. Uh, you're getting everything in ocean racing in this track, light air, breezy conditions. The forecast, in fact, Maybe we go to Windy here and just kind of look into the future a little bit. Uh, if you scroll forward, let's see, how do we do that? We drag this thing? No, maybe we do it in chunks. Oh well, <laughs> I, I looked at this earlier, I apologize. Oh, maybe we use this thing. There we go. Uh, so if you look at this evolve into this evening, uh, this is midnight tonight. Um, it's still gonna be quite strong through the middle here. Uh, so the boat's progressing. Uh, both toward Rodos, the slower boats, they're going to have a, a, a windy night. Um, and the boats that eventually get through these lighter areas around roads, they're going to get back into the breeze uh, further, further west in the course. This is uh, just about dawn tomorrow morning. A little lighter in general, uh, except at Carpathos, except here. That looks like it's holding, holding out to be strong wind. Um, and if we progress a little further into Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, uh, just about this time, the Meltemi goes from, uh, from being in the sort of 15 knot range to being closer to the 20 to 25 knot range. This is where it starts to get really uh, pretty windy. Um, and, and even windier. Here we're getting into darker uh, shades of brown and that's, that's approaching 30 knots. So I think uh, Looking forward into the forecast uh, through tomorrow, Tuesday the 12th of July, and approaching into Wednesday, uh, boats, boats going on this part of the race course, which will eventually be uh, all the fleet, uh, they're going to have quite <laughs> some quite active, active racing out here in big wind and likely big seas uh, in this part of the, the race course. So, um, but I'll pick up this analysis this time tomorrow. And uh, we'll see if that bears out and how everybody did during the night. Uh, anyway, uh, Aegean600.com is the, is the um, URL, is the website address. And um, I urge everybody to, to tune in uh, when they can and just follow this race. It, it, it's really going to be a good one this year. So uh, uh, we're really excited here. Anyway, uh, so 
for uh, day one analysis of the Gene 600. Uh, I'm Dobbs Davis, and I'll see you tomorrow.